David, welcome. Thank you. I read recently that Bill Gates thinks that the work of a robot should be taxed like a human. Is this even feasible or what are the policy implications of replacing human labor with robots? If we do have to do that, then taxing companies for employing robots mm. in a reasonable way makes sense. But who do you tax? Do you tax the corporations that are buying the robots and putting them on the floor, the robot manufacturers mm. like, like my company? I hope not. In principle, I absolutely support the idea of taking some of the tremendous wealth that is realized by automation, mm. by robots and artificial intelligence. So we, business leaders, we have to think about the big picture. On a 10-year view, what would you think would be the best investment? Best investment would be those, those companies that have clear goals um, and, and um, intellectual property for artificial general intelligence with clear short-term uh, returns uh, available. Artificial general intelligence is very different to artificial narrow intelligence, which is what normally you and I have experienced. That's right. So, so how can we define the two of them and set them apart? So humans could jump into another car and figure out how to drive it very quickly. Um, and yet artificial intelligence can't. So that's one thing that um, most artificial intelligence is not. Creative with an imagination, particularly. They, they're really, really good in these very narrow domains, and in some narrow domains they exceed the best human capabilities. To be able to generalize um, is the essence of human intelligence. So how far are we away from general intelligence? How far are we from me believing Sophia is real? Nobody knows. Nobody knows how far we are from um, from solving general intelligence. Is, is, that a, is it a hardware issue? Is it a software issue? It's, it's an issue of, um, of science and experimentation.